This is problem 27 of the QHack 2023 quantum coding challenges, and this one is entitled Desperate Measures. Now the premise of this problem is very simple. We're just given a Hamiltonian, and we are to use stratarization to simulate this model. Now we are given a few restrictions that we need to take into consideration when building our circuit. So let's go ahead and take a look and see what's required to implement what we need. So again, as we said, we're given a Hamiltonian of this form. So it's a spin chain model. So we have couplings between adjacent qubits. So between qubit i and i plus one. And we're also told that, as you can see here, this goes from one to n. And when we reach that value of n, then this final term is going to be m plus one. And we're told that this m plus one is the same as that first side we had. So basically what we have is a closed spin chain. So if we have particle one, particle two, all the way to particle n, the m plus one is going to be the same as side one. So we just need to keep that in mind when we build our, our circuit. Now, the other thing we're told is that, yeah, we need to use stratarization to implement this unitary u, which is the exponential of minus i t times our Hamiltonian. But the caveat here is that we can only use Rx, Ry, Rz, and C0 gates. So we're going to have to construct our circuit using those gates. Also, we're told that every time we apply a C0 gate, we need to add a depolarizing channel to our target qubit of that C0 gate. So basically just adding noise to the target qubit and that depolarizing channel noise is given by this expression. So basically with probability one minus P, we just keep the state we have. And with probability p over three, we apply either an x gate, a y gate, or a z gate to our state. Now, these details are not important because Penny Lane has a built in depolarizing channel gate. So, all we need to do is make sure that every time we have a C naught, we apply it. All right. And now, now, if we look at how our unitary looks like, well, if we take our Hamiltonian and we exponentiate it and apply tertiarization, then we're going to get the product of these exponentials, right, for each of the coupling terms. And then the, this last term, which is associated, which is each individual site and an external magnetic field strength. Now, to implement this single site term, all we need to use is an Rx gate, where the argument is given by this expression here, right, minus 2ht over n. But then for the coupling terms, as we saw in problem 24, we use the icing xx, yy, and zz gates from penny lane, but we can use those here. So basically, we need to implement these from scratch. Now, fortunately, it's not very difficult to do that. All we need to know is that, for example, the icing zz gate is given by this circuit right here. So it's a cx gate between the two qubits, followed by an rz gate with an argument of two theta and then another CX gate. And then once we have our icing ZZ gate, we can use similar identities to the ones we use for single qubit gates. So we can turn this ZZ gate into an XX gate if we sandwich it between Kalamar gates, which is also the same as sandwiching in between this RY of minus pi over two and RY of pi over two. And similarly for the YY gate, uh, we can get it by sandwiching an XX gate between, well, S and S dagger. And we can also show that this is equivalent to sandwiching a ZZ gate between now our X rotation gates of the same arguments, minus pi over two and pi over two. So basically the circuits for XX and YY are going to look the same as that of the ZZ. It's just that we're going to have those rotation gates here at the beginning and at the end, right? So not very difficult. Now we can go ahead and uh, implement that in penny lane, uh, just keeping in mind that we need to add that depolarizing gate to the target qubit every time we apply a CX gate. All right, so first thing we do is we import penny lane and NumPy. We define the number of wires we're going to use on our device which because we're going to be using this depolarizing channel, which generates mixed states, we need to use the default mix device. 
And then the first thing we're going to do is just define uh, functions for our ZZ, XX, and YY gates that we can then call within our trotarization model every time we need to apply one of them. So we can define, let's say, an icing ZZ gate that takes as parameters theta P, which is the probability of applying that depolarizing channel, and then the wires on which we want to apply that gate. And here, as we saw before, what we do is we apply a C naught gate and wires equal wires. Then we're going to add the depolarizing noise channel with probability P, and we're going to add that only to the target qubit. So the second of those wires we're passing here, and we apply our, our Z gate of two theta also on the target qubit. So just to remind you, this is the circuit we're implementing for our ZZ gate. And then again, that second C naught gate and depolarizing channel. So we just copy and paste that here. And this is not going to return anything. It's just every time we call this function, we're going to apply these gates. Now we can do the same for our icing XX gate takes the same inputs. But now what we need to do is apply those RY gates before and after a ZZ gate, right? So we, we just need to apply it to uh, the two qubits. So we do QML, RY, and then we apply an angle of M pi over two on wires zero, and then the same on wires one. And then we just call this icing ZZ function to apply all these gates we define here. And then we just do the same thing here, but with an angle of minus pi over two, right? So just to remind you what we're doing is first we're applying this RY gate, then the ZZ gate, and then the RY gate with uh, minus pi over two, and that gives us this XX gate. And then we do the exact same thing for our icing YY, but we need to now change this from RY gates to RX gates. Okay, great. Now what we're gonna do is define the Q node where we're going to implement the trotarization. So we're gonna do QML, Q node using the device we defined above. We're gonna call it Heisenberg Trotter. And to this, we're gonna pass the couplings, which are gonna be those JX, JY, JZ, and H values for each of the terms in our Hamiltonian. Then P, which is the probability of applying the depolarizing channel, the time for our U of T, and then the depth, which is the total number of steps in our trotarization. So here, let's just separate each of the terms JX, JY, JZ, and H from the couplings we're passing. And now to implement trotarization as we did before, in problem 24, we just do a for loop for the number of steps we have, right? And here, what we need to do is apply each of these terms. So each of our icing XX, icing YY, and icing ZZ, and then the RX gate to each of our qubits going from I equal one to N. So what we could do here is separate for loops for each of these terms but we can also use the broadcast uh, function in penny lane. So if we do QML broadcast, we can actually pass this icing XX function here, which would apply all of these gates to the wires we want. So num wires. So basically here, it would apply one of these icing XX gates between wire zero and one, and then here, since I'm going all the way to four, then it would apply another of this icing XX between one and two, then from two to three. And then what we need to do is apply it, since this is a closed spin chain, apply another one between qubits three and zero, right? So we can do this using uh, pattern equal ring in this broadcast function. So just to show you how, how that works, Let's just define a simpler circuit here where we're just applying a Hadamard gate and some C naught gates, but we're using this pattern ring. And if you see the circuit here, it just applies X gates between adjacent qubits. And then when it ends, it applies between the last qubit and the first qubit, which is what we want for our closed spin chain model. Okay, so um, also we need to pass to this 
the parameters this icing xx function takes, right? So let's do here parameters. And for that, we need to pass theta and p, right? But we need to pass this same parameters for the same number of qubits we have. So the way we do that is we do num wires times, and then we create a list of what we want to pass. So minus jx times time divided by depth, and then p. So in Python, this is just going to generate a list of lists, right? So I have this list of two values, one with my coupling factor and one with p. And then if I multiply that by the number of wires, it, it creates a, a list with these items repeated, right? So if I do, for example, here, one, two, and I do three times one, two, it, it just generates this one, two repeated three times. So that's what we're doing here. We're just passing these two parameters for each repetition of this icing XX model that we're applying to each of the wires. And then we can just do the exact same thing for the icing YY and the icing ZZ, making sure we're updating the coefficients. And then lastly, we do the same thing for the interaction with the magnetic field for each site. So applying a, an RX gate to each of the wires in our circuit with this angle of minus 2H times time divided by depth, which is our N, right? And here we use pa this pattern single because we're just applying these individual gates to each of the qubits. Okay, and lastly, what we're asked to do is to return the state because after running this trotterization model, uh, we're going to calculate the fidelity of our circuit. So let's first go ahead and just show the schematic of our circuit by defining our input values and, and then just printing our model. And I missed a comma here. Okay. All right, so here, here we have it. So we apply our icing XX first, which was our icing ZZ in between these RY gates with pi over two and minus pi over two. And then we have this CX gate, our depolarizing channel RZ and another CX gate. And then if we see here now, the first one is between qubit zero and one and this one qubit one and two, and then qubit two and three. And then as you can see here, it loops back to qubit three to zero, okay? And that's our full circuit. And then we're, we're given this function to calculate the fidelity between our model with no depolarizing error and with a depolarizing error that is given to us. And if we run that for this given values, which is the first input, we get 0 0.343, which if we go down here and look at the answers, is supposed to be larger than um, 0 0.337, which it is. And then if we use this second set of values and run that again, we get 0 0.154, which is very close to the expected answer. Uh, it is within the uh, tolerance level to pass the grader. So I hope this was helpful. Let me know if you have any questions.